Okay, midpoint, however, is so much easier. You don't even necessarily need a calculator for that unless you confuse negatives. So midpoint formula. You're going to average your x's together, which means that you're going to take the two, add them together, and divide by two. And you're going to average your y's together. Again, add y's together and divide by 2. So we have x2, y2, x1, y1. Plug them in. y1 is 9 plus x2 is 7. Divide by 2. y1 is negative 1 plus y2 is negative 5 divided by 2. Deal with the numerators first, meaning the top. 9 plus 7 is 16 divided by 2. Negative 1 plus a negative 5 is negative 6 divided by 2. And then you just have to divide each of those by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Much, much easier. All right, then the next one. Given a midpoint of AB. Oh, find the midpoint of AB given that. Okay, so again, set up your stuff. We're going to plug it into this equation. X1 is 3 plus x2 is negative 7, and divide that by 2. y1 is negative 4, plus y2 is 4, and divide that by 2. Deal with the numerators first. 3 plus a negative 7 is the same thing as 3 minus 7. Again, use a calculator if the negatives confuse you. So negative 4. Um, by the way, for those of you who are in-person people, we do have calculators at the school. So you don't have to worry about downloading them. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0 divided by 2. Skip these next two and go on to these because these you definitely have on your test. Um, so 4 says, if P is a midpoint of X, Y, there is no picture. So we're going to draw it. We have X, Y. Number one rule, always, always, always draw it. And then P is the midpoint, meaning that this and this are the same. XP is 8X minus 2, and PY is 12X minus 30. Find the value of X. Well, I told you that these are congruent, meaning that they're the same. So we're going to set them equal to each other. So 8X minus 2 equals 12X minus 30. Move your smallest x so you don't have to deal with negatives. Those cancel. Bring your negative 2 down. Don't forget it's a negative 2. That's number one mistake that students can make easily. 12 minus 8 is 4x. And then bring your minus 30 down. Add 30 to both sides. Negative 2 plus 30 is 28. Bring your 4x down. And these cancel. Divide both sides by 4. 28 divided by 4 is 7. And that's what x is, which is what it's asking for. All right, again, draw it. If it's not drawn for you, draw it. G is the midpoint of FH. So draw FH first. And then G is the midpoint, meaning that both of these are the same. FG is 14X plus 25, and then GH is 73 minus 2X. So again, they're midpoints, so they're the same. So we're going to set them equal. Subtract 14X from both sides. Bring my 25 down. Bring my 73 down. Negative 2x minus 14x is negative 16x. 
we need to move our 73 over. It is positive, so we're going to subtract 73 from both sides. 25 minus 73 is 48, or negative 48. I should have moved the smallest instead of the biggest. I made my number one mistake there. This is what happens when you got to deal with negatives because you have to keep remembering that this thing is negative and you bring it down. This is a perfect example of why you don't do this. Sorry. And now I've ran out of room, so I'm moving it. Divide both sides by negative 16. Negative 48 divided by negative 16 is a positive 3. But is that what we're trying to find? Nope. We need FH. FH is the entire thing. So this, all of it, is FH. So if we just find one of them, we plug it into any one, um, then it will find half, and then we just double that. Now I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to find GH first. So GH is 73 minus 2X. Let's plug in our X, which is 3 which means that GH is 73 minus 6. So GH is 67. So that means that this is going to be 67 here for GH. But if that's 67, this over here is also 67. So FH is 67 plus 67 which is 134. Last one. So using diagram on the left, if line N bisects PQ, which means that it's a, it creates this midpoint. So they're the same. You set them equal to each other and solve. Move the smallest X this time. So subtract 3X from both sides so we don't have to deal with so many negatives. Bring my 5 down. 5x minus 3x is 2x. Bring my minus 19 down. Add 19 to both sides. 5 plus 19 is 14. Bring my 2x down, and these 19s cancel. Divide by 2 on both sides, and x is 7. Is that what we're looking for? No, we're looking for QP. And QP is right here, 3x plus 5, oops. So let's plug in our x, which is 7. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 plus 5 is 26, which is what QP is. That's the end of our notes.